welcome back to my YouTube channel. So our topic today is about the nominal moment of the beam. Recently, we solved a nominal moment of the beam, but the beam is in its rectangular shape. So what about if the beam is in its irregular shape? That will be kind of interesting. So that will be our topic today. But before that, I would just like to shout out for Juvel Cero. Thank you so much, Juvel Cero, for watching my videos and sharing it to your friends and also for all the engineering students from the University of Mindanao thank you so much Paul. so don't forget to subscribe just continue watching these videos and you just comment below what are your reactions or what other questions you have okay so let's proceed so the question is, we have to calculate the nominal or theoretical ultimate moment strength of the beam from the given section. If Fy is 60,000 PSI and the F'C prime C is 3,000 PSI and 6 inches wide ledges on the top are needed for the support of a precast concrete slab. So we've designed this beam like this because it has, it should support it must support a precast concrete slab in that form all right so we usually design a rectangular shape but what about if it's in this irregular shape so that is the most interesting part here but the solution for that is almost the same with the rectangular where first we have to get the tensile force which is ASFY so the area of the steel is 4 inches that is the area for the steel and the FY is given as 60,000 PSI but we want to make it kips so we just divide it by 1,000 so we have 60 4 times 60 we have 240 kips so that is for our tensile force and we believe that the tensile force is equal to our compressive force all right so with this we already know the value of our force because the nominal moment is just the force times the distance but we don't know the distance or the moment arm yet so that is uh, the interesting part so next to that we have to compute the compressive stress I mean the compression force so the compression is given by the formula which is 0.85 F prime C area of the concrete that is stressed 0.85 F prime C as you can remember I have told you in my previous video that the compressive force is just 0.85 F prime C multiplied by the area that is being compressed or the area that is stressed due to compression okay so the formula for the compressive uh, force is 0.85 f prime c multiplied by the area of the concrete that is stressed to 0.85 f prime c so if it's just a square automatically if that is just a square there automatically we assume that this that the certain portion that is a and that is the height that is being compressed and this one is b so automatically the area we assume already that this is the area so we just use a times b if that is a rectangle so if that is an irregular shape this is how we're gonna do that we have to know first what is the value of our area of the concrete that is stressed. So, equating tensile force to the compressive force, we will get AC is equal to T over 0 0.85 multiplied multiplied by f prime c so we get that the value of our area is 94.12 inches squared all right so we already know the area but we don't know until which part until which in this portion or that portion we don't know yet we just have the area that is being stressed to 0 0.85 f prime c all right so next 
next or next step is we have to identify until which portion is being compressed. So we know that this is six here and this is also six here. Oh, sorry for the writing. This is six. Okay, so if that is six and six, then the area of this portion here is 36 inches squared. All right, so since we get that the area is um, of the concrete is 94.12 inches squared, it means that we still have an area compressed below this square here so i mean do we still have a remaining area there so since we know that this is 18 then by that we will get the height so 36 plus so we have 36 plus 18 times uh, let's say we assume that as our x is equals to 94.12 and by that we get the height of this all right and the height of this is simply 3.23 okay so if that is 3.23 then from the top down to that that is our a so our a is 9.23 so 9.23 so that is how we get our a here all right so it's it's your own strategy as long as you already have the value of the area that is compressed okay so you have to know until which portion is being compressed you started from the top and then you ended until which portion uh, is being compressed the area that is being compressed all right so now we already know the area that is being compressed which is this area here that is the area that is being compressed and our compressive force is acting if that is a rectangle automatically if this is a here automatically it is acting on the center all right because the area is just a rectangle or a square so here we have to locate the center of gravity or the centroid of the area and that is where our compressive force is acting so our next solution is we have to know where this C where this compressive force is acting so we have to get this we assume maybe it's somewhere here but we don't know exactly what is that so we assume that the value from the top to that is our y bar all right so here we just use the varignan's theorem i hope you are familiar with that so that is we use the area times the y bar the area total all right the total area times the y bar is equals to y1 times its own centroid plus so on and so forth all right so First, we just we already divided by the area total, so we know that this area, the total area of this, is given as the 94.12. Okay, so that is the area total there. We just you know put it here. We just divide both sides by area total, and then the area one. This is the first portion that we considered. And then here is its center. So that 36 is the area, 36. And its center, that that three meters is the distance the, from where you start counting, all right? We started counting from the top. So this is our three here because this is six so the center is acting on the center so that height from the top is three 
plus, we consider just two area here. So this is the next area. So that is um, the next area. So 18 times 3.23, the area for that is 15.12. So this area is 15.12. And of course, the, the centroid for that is acting on the middle of this. So that is why we, ha we added 6 plus half of this, which is 3.23 over 2. Alright, I hope that is clear. Okay, so just the area times the y bar. So our reference point is from the top. So that distance is from the top down to the center of the area that is considered. Okay, so that is the formula for, you know, the relation or the Varignes formula. So by that, we get that our centroid is actually acting on 5.85 from the top. So this Y bar here is Y bar, and that is where our compressive force is acting. Okay. So now, since we already have that, and then, then, we can then we can solve for our um, uh, the moment arm that we have to consider because again this this is the compressive force here acting on that and then we also have the tensile force acting on our bars and we believe that C is equals to T all right, which is given by 240 kips. Sorry for the writing. And then that moment arm here is given as D minus Y bar. All right, so the D is given in the free previous figure. So the D is given as oh, 21. Okay, 21, and that is from the top down here. So 21 minus Y bar, so that is the moment arm. Okay, that is the moment arm. So D minus Y is 21 minus 5.85, then we get that our moment arm is 15.15. Okay, so since we already have that moment arm and we also have the force which is 240 gips then moment is just the force times its moment arm so 240 times 15.15 then we get 3,636 inches gips or maybe we should say 333 gips so that is how we actually solve for the irregular shapes all right so we always have have to remember that the compressive force is acting on the centroid of the area that is being considered and of course the it is the most important thing we just have to get the area of the concrete that is being compressed by 0 0.85 f prime c and if you already have the area being compressed it's up to your strategy or how are you going to get that but you started from the very top you get until which portion is being compressed given that you already have the area that is compressed all right so even if your shape is in this form like a hollow shape so you have nothing to worry about it all you have to do is you have to get the area that is being compressed all right and then you started measuring this area and if that area is still greater than maybe and your area is up to this point then you just have to calculate until which portion is being compressed okay so that distance will be our your A to, to the portion that is being compre compressed or stressed by 0 0.85 F prime C the same as true with the T you get the area of the concrete that is being compressed and if the area area of the flange is smaller than that, that maybe the area that is being compressed is up to this point. 
are up to that point, we don't know. But below the flange, you know, because the area of being compressed is greater. If it's greater, but if it's smaller than the flange, then maybe the area that is being compressed is just right here. So you try 30 times x is equal to that area, then you will get the height to which portion is being compressed. That is just how you solve it. The same is true with the eye, the same with the rectangle, the same with the triangle, and even if that shape, even whatever shape it is. And after you get that portion that is being compressed, you just have to get the centroid because that is where the force is acting and then by that you will get the distance or the moment arm so i hope you've learned a lot today thank you so much for watching and hope to see you soon in my next videos thank you so much